Hey, let's grab a seat. Um, Hey, and if you're at the top, there are a lot of seats down front, so come down here. Hey, Doe, just, Doe, just keep sending, just keep sending people down, all right? Hey, um, so a couple things, uh, We are, um, Hey friends, while we're getting set up, this is just a friendly reminder that when class starts, your Wi-Fi or your just devices in general need to be turned off so that we can run our cameras. Cool? Thank you. Okay, here we go. Um, it always takes a, a few minutes to get to get started. You know what I mean? Like we're all like really getting the technology down and the whole nine yards. Hey, so uh, we're gonna we're we're gonna jump right in. Let me just say a couple things that um, we will start officially taking attendance next on Tuesday. Um, also, but today at the end of class, we're gonna do a practice attendance quiz so you like have a sense of how we do that and you make sure you get it down and that sort of thing. Um, and a couple, couple things that you, that you need to know. Um, make sure you, you have to read the syllabus in this class because I'm not going to talk about it. And even if, I did, even if I did talk about it, it wouldn't make any sense because it's too long. I mean, it's like a 15-page document. So, uh, so read it and then take the syllabus quiz and you'll be in, in good shape, okay? Um, that's, that's the most important thing. Otherwise, uh, we, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna jump in. We're just trying to get the, Darnish is trying to get it all, the guru of tech. Uh, hey, so um, can you go, 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 to the, go to the next slide? So remember, um, one of the ways, I, w I want to emphasize this again so that you're aware, one of the ways this class works is, uh, is by you all engaging one another. And, and my job will be to set up situations and, and ask you questions and have, give you the ability to have conversations or hear from other people. And I, I have this idea that, um, and, I, and I really think it's true. It's not just an idea, but it's actually, uh, I think, quite true. Um, you all have, every one of you has something, has a lot of stuff to say. And, uh, and you may not know it because, you know, we, we grow up in a world where we do education as though whoever the teacher is has all the information and I just have to download that into your brains and you'll and then then you'll be educated of course you'll um pretty quickly forget it because that's the nature of things um you know how you do you cram for exams and then you forget everything that was on the exam um uh, but I have the idea that because you forget it, 
And because, um, you know, maybe you take notes in a class and as a result of, you know, taking those notes, you have all that information in a notebook, but you don't carry that notebook around with you. You know, it's not, it's not like, you know, in the past, people, those of you who study engineering, in the past they used to say, you know, you have to memorize all these math problems because, uh, because you, you know, you're not, you can't use a calculator on exams because you're never going to have a calculator with you at all times. Well, you know, that's not true anymore because you do have calculators with you at all times. It's called a cell phone. Um, but that's not, but it is still true with regard to your, hey, there are a lot of seats down front for those who are coming in late. Just come down here, over on the side, whatever. Uh, but, but it is true uh, with regard, uh, or it's, it's not true with regard to notes uh, that you take in a class like this. So like, if you're not going to remember it, and you're not going to have the notes, like what's the purpose of me just talking and giving you lots of information? So I have this idea that you all have so many interesting stories and experiences that the way to do this kind of teaching is to invite you down and just engage with you, right? Because there are people here really from all walks of life and all over the world. And so that's what we do. And hence, that's what this uh, is right here. And so uh, that's how I think about this. Can you just... All right, man. So can you go to the next slide? So I'm, I'm just going to start us out today with something. Hey, does anybody, actually, anybody want, normally, again, what happens is you, you know, you fill out the volunteer form and you, uh, and before class starts, we already know who all our volunteers are. Today, that's not the case. So I've selected uh, a, a few people who are going to be volunteers at some point. But let me ask, does it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to talk about this stuff. So uh, I was going to see if somebody wanted to do it, but I'll just do it. Um, do you... So here's the thing. It may well be that at some point in time, the world was created as it is, and that there's some creator being who maybe it was like, 5,000 years ago or 6,000 years ago or who has who knows what it is but the creator being created the world in six days or seven days or rested on the seventh day I don't know whatever happened whatever the story is it may be that that's really what happened and okay that's the story and that maybe you know dinosaurs lived while people were here um, who, I don't know anything. I have no idea. Dinosaurs were, fossils were put here by the devil to trick people into not believing in God. I, I don't know. There are any number of things, stories that could be. I'm just going to say that it doesn't really matter to me per se, okay? I am a scientist, however, in, in, in the sense that I think about science. And so I, I, study enough of the evolutionary process about, you know, the fossil record, the genetic record, all sorts of things. And the stat story is a story in which, you know, human beings, you know, Homo sapiens first emerged here in the Nilotic region of Africa, okay? And then you see this sort of process, pro pro progress up to where we get Homo erectus and then Homo sapiens, and that would be us. And and then slowly, you know, these two-legged creatures uh, start moving out of Africa. And they, they go around the world and they populate the world. And these are more or less the areas in which, you know, the, the, the patterns, the migration patterns. And what happens is that as people leave these areas, they go to different places in Africa, south, you know, west, etc. But as they move in different places in the world, they encounter different environmental conditions and that you know it, it may be like the, the the temperature the cold uh the wind um the amount of sun that that people get the diets the kinds of things that um would impact their bodies 
in lots of different ways, okay? And as a result, in certain conditions, certain bodies and certain body types thrived more than others. And the body adapts to it, meaning that, you know, something like texture of hair or the size of our nose or how tall we are or how wide we are or any number, the percentage of fat on our bodies. I mean, any number of things that over a particular time, nature has this way, life itself wants to survive and wants to thrive. And maybe that's really what God is, right? God is everything. And so God wants to survive. And so God is going to find these really interesting and innovative ways to survive. And it may be, for example, that in this particular region, you know, right here, as opposed to here, a certain hair texture is really just much more adaptable. It's just better for thriving, right? And it just makes sense so that the people with a particular hair texture, they tend to thrive in that region. But if they go to another region, you know, hair, you know, the body acclimates to the region and suddenly like, oh, a different hair texture is really just better, uh, more adaptive and, and will allow the body to, th to thrive in that particular region. And so like, okay. And so what we see then is people with a different kind of hair really do very well, genetically speaking. And then they, you know, they, are, they pass their genes on and those people thrive. And then slowly particular body types or particular things connected to the body, they start to die off, they change. And so you see this very slow process of the body changing. And that's how it is that you look around the, this room and you see people who look different from other people, and you can say, ah, at some point in time, you know, your people, your ancestors going far back, you know, they had kind of arrived in one of these regions, stayed in these regions for a long period of time, adapted to that region, their bodies adapted to the region, not only, and lots of other things as well, right? Because we get culture out of this, and we get, but they adapted to the region, and then we have all these different looks. And this is, re this is, what I'm about to say right now is the single most important thing, and, I'm and then I'm going to be inviting people up in a few minutes. No one look, whether it's, it's, it's size or it's, 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 it's height, it, it's weight, it's width, it's blue eyes or brown eyes or a type of hair or nose or ears or eyes or whatever it is. When you see it this way, the no one look is just infinitely just better than any other look. It's just by nature, by itself, is better than any other. No one particular body. Because all of our bodies adapted to the environments where our ancestors were. And so, like, I don't look in a mirror and think, like, oh, I'm a white person. Any, any degree to which I would say, oh, I really like my hair. I'm really glad I don't have curly hair or, you know, or, or a tightly kinked hair right? Or, you know, whatever it would be, right? I, I'm, I'm really glad because it's better. It's not better because my ancestors needed this hair. My ancestors needed this skin. And if I, and when you look in a mirror and you have really darkly pigmented skin, that's because your ancestors needed that darkly pigmented skin. And if they didn't have darkly pigmented skin, you wouldn't be here today because they would have died off. And so this, this is where like, if you really understand this evolutionary process, then we can kind of get away with, uh, stop like thinking that people are better than other people or I'm better or you're better or whatever the case is. It's just that that's how we get to all these really amazing differences because these bodies that we have are really pretty phenomenal, just as existence itself, right? And so for example, if there is a God and the God somehow became into being and created everything as it is. That's pretty cool too. And it's all cool. You got it? But this is the story of evolution. So when you say, I don't believe in evolution, what you're doing is you're, you're basically saying there's this whole world of science who are, who have, 
who have mountains and mountains and mountains and millions and millions and millions of hours of studying these human bodies over time in different areas of the world, you're basically saying all of their work is irrelevant. And like, ah, it's not really irrelevant. It's actually pretty cool. And when you study this, and I'm, and I'm making a plea now, right? When you study this, those of you who have this idea that, you know, like, there is a God and God created us exactly as we are. When you, if you study the evolutionary process, all these like really, really interesting, this work that people do, if you study it, you'll see like, wow, they make a really amazingly persuasive case that, yeah, we've been around a long time and these bodies have acclimated and changed and, wow, yeah, so evolution's got a lot going on, man, so you don't have to throw it out. Those of you who are these hard science, like left brain, brain science people, who's like, I don't believe in a God, it's all evolution. Well, where'd the sp first spark of life come from? You, you know what I mean? Like, where'd we come from? What is that? What is the mystery? This mystery that we are, consciousness, everything. Like, you science people, it's like, where's, what started the mystery? You know, you, you just, I look around here, I think about what consciousness is, and like, oh, it's so awesome. So like, this, the science people can get really narrow and lose the mystery. And the evolution, pe or the, the creation people can get really narrow and lose the, sci the mystery or the, the awesomeness of the science. Like, you study this fossil record, it is like, it is like a map that is so detailed and so interesting, and it's changing all the time because we're learning new things about the map, okay? So now, that's just, I don't know why I started there. I had no intention of starting. I, never, I had no intention of saying any of that. But, but you, you, I hope, I hope though, but, but again, my intention is for everybody to take a step, a little bit of a step in a new direction to like open, open our minds to something we haven't thought about. Um, and by the way, I meet a lot of science people who, well, the people who are really, really into science, my scientist friends who are really, really science oriented, they also, most of them are also pretty spiritual. And my creationist friends who are like really spiritual and really connected to God, they also have a really, yeah, they, they have a pretty cool take too. So eh, it's all good. All right, so now, um, can you go to, the, go, to the, go to the next slide? Hey, does anybody just feel like they, um, can anyone explain skin? to the, Anyone just feel like volunteering really fast? Who oh, just want to answer a couple questions? Bro, you want to, since you're going to, you're going to volunteer. Do you want to do it? Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you, uh, why don't I bring my, why don't I bring the three, the first three volunteers up? Why don't you come up? Yeah, why don't the three of you come up? Yeah, bro, Mustafa and, yeah. Can you make sure they... You guys can sit on the table. Listen, the reason, when you all volunteer, when we have more than one people, or more than three people, we'll set the chairs out and, and all. Um, but it's really, for me, it's better if people are on the table because you're, we're kind of at the same eye, eye, eyesight. Can you just introduce yourselves really fast? You turn the mics on by just like pushing the, pushing up. Mustafa, we'll start with you. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mustafa Slau. I'm a second year student studying mechanical engineering and computer science. And where, what's your ancestry? I'm Nigerian from the Yoruba Nig tribe. Nigerians, man. All right. Hi, I'm Kalpitha. Um, I'm a second year nursing student and... Whoa, you're a nursing student? Yeah. Second year? Awesome. I was going to ask, I was going to try to find a nursing student. All right, Kalpitha. And, where, and what's, your, what, what's your ancestry? Indian. Indian? Mm -hmm. where, and you were, lived in Canada for a while? Or? Uh, I was born in India and then I moved to Canada when I was two. And then I moved to Atlanta when I was 15. Atlanta when you were 15. Mm -hmm. We're in Canada. Toronto. Toronto. All right, Nico. 
Hi, I'm Nico Johns. Um, I'm a first year accounting student. I plan to go to law school. Um, Nico Johns, yes. J-O-H-N-S. Yeah, what's your full name, Nico? Is Nico your, per, on your birth certificate? Yeah. Seriously? Dude, awesome, that's a cool Italian name. Italian a little bit, Greek. Yeah, though. yeah, and do people call you, do, do you have a nickname, Mustafa, is it, what do your friends call you? Um, some people call me Moose. Moose? Yeah. The moose it is. All right. And Calpita? Do you have a nickname? Not really. P no, people don't call you Pita? I mean... Like your grandmother? Sometimes people call me Callie. Callie? I don't really like that. Oh, yeah, okay. Calpita, <laughs> Moose, yeah. and Nico. All right, man. So tell me the story of skin. How, how do you all like... How, how do you have these different skin textures? Like, what do you know about skin? By the way, hang on. I'm expecting, so here's how this volunteer thing goes. I'm expecting they don't know anything, okay? You know, you know what I mean? Because remember, school is about, I have all the information, I got to give it to you, and once I give it to you, you have it, and then like, okay, and God forbid, oh, man, can you imagine the terror of one of them saying something stupid? And like, oh my God, right? Are you like, are you afraid of saying something dumb? Are you afraid of saying something dumb? Dude, so here, we got to break this. You don't know anything about this. I know you don't know anything about this, so anything you say is going to be dumb, okay? You got that? This is the beauty of it. Look, most of what I say is dumb, right? But anything you guys say is going to be dumb, but it's not really dumb, okay? So we're going to break through that. You're just going to say like, well, I don't know because you don't, right? But, you know, here, isn't it about this or isn't it about that? And then we're going to work with it. So, like, you, you got it. There's no gotcha stuff here. You can't say anything. Okay, so give me a guess. How do, we how do you all come to have different skin tones? I can go ahead and start. Um, I think there's some scientific basis. So whether it's, like, exposure to sunlight, um, different types of work, um, yeah. Exposure to sunlight. Okay, awesome. Yep. What do you mean by, what's, what do you mean, and one of you can jump in. What do you mean by exposure to sunlight? What does that mean? And think about what I was talking about. Maybe it has something to do with like what part of the, of the map you're from and like how the, I guess, how the sun hits your, where you're from. Okay. Okay, dude. Awesome. And, and, and say more about exposure. Think about the story I just told, right? People, can you go back one, Leah? So remember, people are leaving. People are leaving here, and they're traveling around. They're going places, right? Okay, go forward, right? Remember that. And as they go to different areas of the world, their bodies adapt to different things. So now you're saying, oh, yeah, our bodies must adapt to sun. Do you think the first person started as, like, white or black? Or, like, how do we know? I don't know. Well, go, go back to the other map, right? Go back one, Leah. Uh, so here's where we started. Okay, the Nilotic region. So Ethiopia is like right there. So we think, think Ethiopia. Okay, so, okay, now go, go forward. Okay, right there. So the first person, answer your own question. Black. Okay, got it. Not just black, dude, but like Musa black, Mustafa black. <laughs> not like, you know what I mean? Not, not like, not like th this dude black, all right? <laughs> or this dude black. You know what I mean? It's like, like Mustafa black. And to, hang on, again. So now here's the thing, right? That, okay. Dude, is, is that, do you feel con self-conscious about that? Not really. Okay, why not? Like, what, what makes you not feel self-conscious? Like, how is that for you? Like, yeah, go ahead. I think just growing up, um, and just being comfortable with myself, uh, definitely got the Dude, jokes. someone's calling you, by the way, on uh, your phone. Yeah. He's got you, though. Thank you. Thank you, Sing. But yeah, it's just growing up, um, I'm very comfortable. It's your, it's your it, it mom, really might be. she's watching it, the stream, it might be. and she's, she, she's gonna, this is like calling in, you know, she's yeah. calling in a hint. You Thank know? you, Say. Right. But yeah, just like growing up where I grew up, um, being very comfortable with my culture, um, being very comfortable with who I am as well. I definitely got the jokes when I was younger, but going through that phase and then getting out of that. Yeah, wait, do you, th is what I said a joke? 
No, I don't think so. Okay, I got you. Okay. You know, that's important, right? Remember what I said last class about like microaggressions? Like, so you all have to be like, hey, man, I, I can, because listen, you, you can see pretty quickly, I, I'm, I'm comfortable enough. I'm going to like play around with stuff, right? So, but I can step over a line and then you go like, okay, hang on, Sam. That was, and sometimes like in the beginning of a semester, the, the line is, you know, the line is closer to me. As we get going and you have more trust in me and you have a better sense of who I am, then the line is like way out here because you'll see like, all right, this guy got it. Right now, I'm just an old white dude. In the sense is like old white guys don't get it. And I'm like, but this old white guy, <laughs> maybe I do get some stuff, right? So, but, but you know what I mean. Okay, so got it. All right, so... Um, so more like, wait, moose, right? Yeah, moose, all right. Uh, okay, so what else? Then what happens? Calpita, calpita, calpita. You don't say the H, right? Calpita. Yeah. Exactly. I'm letting her know how to pronounce her name. So <laughs> you don't say the H, calpita. All right, good. What, so what about, what about this guy? How do, you get, how do you get the skin? How'd you get your skin? How do you get his skin? I mean, obviously it has something to do with melanin, but like... What's melanin? Here's a new word. Go ahead. The pigmentation of your skin. Okay. Like what gives it the pigment. Okay. And what does that do? Do the you say as much as you know? The more melanin you have, the darker you are. Okay. And all right, then, cool. Yeah. Have you heard of melanin before, bro? Yeah. Okay, all right. So come on, you guys know a lot. Okay, so now go to the next one. Like what? So more melanin you have, the darker you are. So, okay, tell the story. What else? What do you got? So you want to tell the story. You want to tell the story. See, the key isn't how do we get from here to here. The key is how do we get from here to here to here, right? So tell us, so what else do you got? Anything else? Go ahead. Nico, you got this, man. You're 18. You got it. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't really make sense because if you start, like, from... Like as like black, and you move on. Like I thought you would have to reproduce with a you know a white person to make like you know a brown person or another white person. So I don't understand like where they just randomly like okay come. Okay, I got you. Perfect, man. This is one of the reasons, by the way, why people kind of turn away at some level from things like science, right? You don't you don't really know the story, and so then you come up with these different ideas and then and also these ideas that one is better than another it's like okay do you have anything else you want to add about melanin anybody no you got it okay so here let me let me walk through the story a little bit so look at some point in time as human beings go from homo erectus to homo sapiens we start you know we have body hair and we start losing that body hair and body hair does a couple things. One, it keeps us warm, which is really important because it's fur, basically, right? But also we lose it because, you know, the body um, needs, uh, it's adaptive, right? The body needs access to more sun, more different, you know, like we, we need access out there, right? So we lose this body hair, but as we lose the body hair, we have a problem because the body hair is a natural protective protection from UV, UV rays, ultraviolet rays, okay? UVR, we'll say. And the skin cancer, you all hear of skin cancer, right? That's not a new thing. This isn't because, like, you know, we destroyed the ozone level, you know, in the, over the course of the past 70 years. Skin cancer is part of life. It's, been, it's part of human life, right? It's rogue, ge, rogue, rogue, d, d, rogue cells and like, okay? So therefore, we need some other way to protect ourselves from the ultraviolet rays of the sun because... We don't, we don't have this body hair anymore. Okay, so now, um, as we, one natural protectorant, the body does this amazing thing by producing this enzyme called melanin. And there are different ones, right? But melanin is the dark one. And melanin gives us the most protection from UV. So like ultraviolet rays here, moose has the most protection just because of the nature of his skin. So if, if I'm going to be out spend a lot of time out in the sun and I don't have hats I don't have you know clothing and hats and you know that sort of thing because human you know clothing you got this right it's relatively recent I mean it's relative to human 
you know, homo sapiens, this whole process. You know, people don't have hats. You don't have baseball hats. You don't have sunscreen. You don't have clothing. And so this guy right here, anybody with his skin pigmentation, has, he has the most melanin, which is the, is the greatest amount of natural protectorant from UV rays of the sun. So if I'm going to be out in the sun a lot, I'm going to be like, man, I want to look like him. I want his skin, right? If I'm somewhere in between, so now we got, so we're in this dark right here, and um, so we're, we're in this dark area, so this is moose, and then we start moving away, and we got to, to uh, oh man, I knew, Steve, if you didn't have a nickname, I was going to be Calpitra, Calpita, right? So now we're in this, this kind of tan, somewhere in between all these areas here, right? And then we get to Nico, and we start going up north. Boy, you're Italian though, right? Yeah. Okay, so we start going up north, and like, he gets really white. So here's what's up, right? You need the sun because the sun helps us to synthesize and produce calcium and folic acid and vitamin D. So we need sun. But, you know, he's going to be out in the sun, and he's going to be protected from it right? And he's got this melanin, so that he's going to get a certain amount of, of folic acid, vitamin D, and calcium, so we got to have that. But this guy right here, he has less melanin, and he has less sun. The further you go north, and the further south is a little bit different, but the further you go north, there's less sun. And so he doesn't have access to that sun in the same way, right? And so he needs to shed his dark skin. So it doesn't have, like, we're, we're talking, like, tens of thousands of years, you understand here, but he needs to shed the dark skin because the dark skin is going to keep him from synthesizing the, 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 from these rays synthesizing in his body. So he gets vitamin D, calcium, and folic acid, okay? This is really important. He needs those things. Without those things, you basically, you, you don't survive, right? So he needs really light skin because he gets so little sun up here that it's really beneficial for him to have light skin. If he goes, if, if Moose goes north, it's a whole different story. Right now, today, you, here you are in State College, where it's pretty dreary and pretty gray. But like, okay, that's fine. But, the, but you, you're not, it takes, you know, thousands of years for this whole process to go, right? It's estimated, like, we can radically change skin tone. We probably did in about 100 generations, actually. So, so this is the story. So who has the best skin? Bro, which one has the best skin of these folks right here? No one. No one. Why not? What? Like each location has its. Benefits. Yeah. Well, for the, for them now, it's yeah. a little bit different, right? So for them, for now, because you, you can live wherever and you can make up whatever story you want. You can be like, yeah, I have the best skin, and she can say. I have the best skin, and he can say I have the best skin. But if we go to their ancestors, whatever you, whatever you're, if you didn't have the, if they didn't have the skin they had, you wouldn't be here. They wouldn't have survived. You would, your ancestors wouldn't have survived. Now they can survive up in the north, and your ancestors wouldn't have survived here. They've all died of skin cancer, where where his ancestors were. Right, dude, you got it. Thanks, man. Okay, so that's the story of skin. Now here. What does that, what, what's it tell us about, we're going to continue with you guys. I'm going to have you talk a little more, right? What's it tell us? All the, the ways in which we, hang on, Moose, when you said, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, there's a lot of stigmatization, stigma about really dark skin, right? Can you, t do you, can you, do you, can you say something about that or does it like, am I making that up or is that real? No, um, it's definitely real. Um, uh, I think, I, I'm not really sure what the stigma is. I think it's just the jokes that might be perceived as funny. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember being a kid, and then, like, when the lights would go out, uh -huh. be like, where's Moose? Where's Moose, yeah. yeah. Or, like, we see your eyes, yeah. we see your teeth, yeah. what else? Yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, But I, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what the stigma is. Uh -huh. It's just the jokes. Yeah, well, the, the, the stigma is, I suppose, do you guys want to say anything? I was just going to say it's like a culture thing. Like, uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know. I guess that's all I want to say. Uh-huh. Do you want, want to say anything? Well, you know, like, we, we created a system. So here's, here's something that, okay, hang on. It's the second class, and I'm going to talk about slavery. 
for just a hot minute, okay? We're going to, because here we go. We've always had slavery in the world. We've always had slavery. We have, there's more slavery today than at any point in human history. We have slavery. Um, it's not white people enslaving people, by the way. I mean, a little tiny bit, but mostly it's not. Um, but what we saw with the European chattel slavery was really large. It's not the, the, people have enslaved people for a lot of reasons, okay? One, mostly cultures. So like people who look like you enslaved other people who look like you. People who look like you enslaved other people who look like you, and people who look like him enslaved people who look like him. Europeans had, we had, they, they had lots of slaves, okay? The reason is because you didn't enslave people on the other side of the world. You enslaved people who were right next to you, and you didn't like them for some reason. Maybe they spoke a different language, maybe a different culture, maybe this, maybe that, but whatever. Those are the people you enslave. So you, you know what I mean? So the Italians, the, you know, what would be the, the Turks and the Greeks, and right? Okay, so, um, but what, what we have in this, the, the slave system that we call chattel slavery we see in the West, in Europe, in the U.S., was the first time in a systematic way, in a big way, people creating an ideology around slavery based fundamentally on biology and where people were from. And what they did was they said, because you got to justify this. Like, wait, I'm talking, I never talk this much, by the way, in this class. I'm talking a lot, but for whatever reason, is that okay? Wait, hang on. Is this inter is it interesting? You know why I don't talk? Because I feel like no one ever remembers anything that I say. And so like, eh, why would I talk? Just like, listen to them. Uh, <laughs> it's not because Europeans were the most evil or the most violent or anything like that. It just happened that way, okay? And they created this system in which by you ha they, they, they was in order to create this slave system that they needed, because they needed labor in the new world, right? You have to have a rationalization. And the rationalization was that people who looked like him were inferior to people who looked like me or Nico, okay? And so you've got to have an ideology of that, because you can enslave somebody on the base. You can enslave someone on the base of they're my enemy, they live in the next valley over, and so we go to war with them, and then we take prisoners, and they become our slaves. You can do that because you hate them, but we, nobody hated, no one hated Africans. They were just a convenient people. Then we had to create an ideology that people who look like you were inferior, and then everything becomes based on that. And so there's, that's the origin of the skin piece, right? And then, and then it's like, okay. And that's, that's, I think, part of that, like the, the stigma, the whatever. Like you, you people of, of African ancestry, just in this part of the world, right? Because India, you got your own thing going on over there, which we'll talk about, like the different ways in which you battle each other. But like, it's just something we've been dealing with forever. Okay, that's the story. That's a quick version of the story. Okay, so... Um, so this is cool, right? So you get the skin thing. It's just like, okay. So this is why, now, you gotta be able to talk about, this is science, it's basic, it's science, it's cool. It's not just science, it's life. So it's like, it's okay to talk about skin. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, now, first off, we're gonna have a conversation for the rest of the class. And uh, what I'd like is, I wanna make sure I don't white center the conversation or like use white as the norm, okay? Do you, does do any of you, do one of you wanna say what you think that means? White centering a conversation. Do you have any sense of what that would mean? Just like making white people the like standard, I guess. Make white people what? Like the standard. The standard, okay. Yeah. Maybe like everything that white people do is like the baseline and the, then compare yeah, the everybody baseline, else. Right? Yeah, right? Because you know, from another part of the world, like, you, you know, like, right, right here, from where you sit here, right? Do you, do you go back to Nigeria at all? Yeah. Okay, so when you go back to Nigeria, it's like when you see the white person, you're like, okay, that person stands out, right? People who, are not, who don't look like you, you know, you're in the norm. They stand out in some way, right? And like when you go back, when you go to India, have you, have, you been to India? have you been back to India? Okay, similar thing, right? Like, you see it. We have lots of shades and so on, right? Okay, um, but right now, 
like what we have in, in the U.S. is white can, because white, white people are the majority, it can be just like white people become the norm. So in this conversation, I want to make sure that I don't use white as the norm. So I'm just saying that so we move forward. I probably won't. I don't think I will because I don't see white people as the norm. But, you know, okay, Leah, next one, man. All right. So here's my problem, man. We've created a society. It's a, it's a, on one hand, it's a good thing. On the other hand, it's a bad thing. We've created a world here in the United States where we don't want to be offensive to other people. So we're very careful about what we say. Now, the good news about that is like when you were a kid and people are making fun. Did people make fun of you being Indian? Did you have any of that? Not really. No? No, not really. Yeah? Did people talk about like... Just because like, I mean, a lot of the time since I moved around a lot... People, people yeah. never really like knew I was Indian. Uh -huh. They always assumed I was like something else, like yeah. anything but Indian. So what they think that you were, by the way? They thought I was Hispanic. Hispanic, yeah, yeah. yeah it's interesting. <laughs> I know when I saw you, I was I thought Hispanic, but then I saw your nose, the lower part of your nose, and I'm like, no, nah, she's Indian. <laughs> Wait, can you see her? Wait, can we do that? Can we show them your nose? Uh. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on. Wait, don't do it yet. Is that alright? I mean, it's just face, it's just the nose. No, wait, hang on. Is that, what do you think about that? You know, I'm going to stand in front of her. I don't know. It's just your, it's your, it's your skin, your nose, your hair, it's my nose. Hang on, hang on, move down. Look at my nose first, all right? <laughs> so we're not, we're not going to white center. Okay. So see my nose? Can you go in a little further? I have this, I have a, actually kind of a pretty small nose. And if I turn to the right, you see, I broke my nose when I was in high school, playing football, by the way. And, uh, and so I have this little flat area right here I can like set things, I can balance things on. Um, but, but you, the, the, low, you, the low part of your nose right here, the nostrils, mm -hmm. that's what, for me, I said, ah, no, okay, hang on. I think she's, I think you're Indian, right? Or, or South Asian, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, but listen, but this is what I mean about, it's just nat it's natural, right? So you're already up here, kind of whatever. But this is what, for me, what I want to do in this class is naturalize all of this stuff because it's a problem when we don't allow ourselves to have these open conversations. So you're going into nursing, right? Okay, what have you learned about taking blood from this guy and taking blood from, pull your, pull your sleeve up and dude, pull your, Hang on, why don't you, can, can you actually stand up? Um, come over here. Can you guys scoot, move closer together? Put your arms together. Can you zero in on their arms a little bit? So what do you, what do you, you got to take, do you, 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 must, you must have at least a, a, some session in phlebotomy at some point. You probably haven't yet. Yeah, soon. Okay. Yeah. You know what, you know what phlebotomy is? Drawing blood? Yeah. It's like the state. Okay. So how do you, look, at, you got to draw blood from these guys. Okay, so look mm -hmm. at their, how do you, how do you look, so here, here's this guy, oh wait, actually you don't, hang on, let me see if we can get your vein to stand out, you had it done recently, okay, right there, right, how do you, look at, look at his arm versus his arm, now the vein structure, and by the way, hang on, I, I'm going to tell this story, this comes from a conversation I had just two weeks ago, I was at the hospital getting some blood drawn, and I asked the phlebotomist, I said, hey, um, she, found, she found the vein. It's pretty easy. You can see for me. I said, hey, by the way, um, what they teach you in school about taking blood from really darkly pigmented people? And she said, mm, get ready for this. She said, they didn't really talk about that. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, go ahead. Yeah, we, we haven't really touched that subject You haven't yet. touched it yet. Yeah. You will, though, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm preparing you for it now because when okay. you do it, you're gonna you're gonna thought, you're gonna remember this conversation, right? And she said, uh, they, "We didn't really talk about that." I'm like, "Well, hang on. How difficult is it to get blood to see a vein in someone who's really dark, has dark pigmentation versus someone who's lighter skin? You know, like me, because she found my, you know she put the clamp on and she found my vein pretty quickly, and she said, "Yeah, it can be really difficult sometimes." And I said, "Oh, all right. Well." What would you, what'd you learn about that? Did they talk about it? And she said, no. I said, well, did you have black people in your class? Like, did you? She said, yeah, there was like one black person. 
I said, well, did they, did that person, who, and I said, did, did that, it was a woman. I said, did she have really dark skin? And she said, yes, yeah, she had pretty dark skin. I said, well, did your instructor talk about it? And she said, no. I said, well, where did you learn to, how, the tricks, the tricks, right, to get blood from people with really darkly pigmented skin? And she said, I just kind of learned it on my own. And I was like, oh, my God, I feel bad for all those dark-skinned people like she's poking at them constantly till she learns how to get blood from them right and so i'm like this is the fear of offending people right this is this is p- part of the problem like we're not gonna you know we can't talk about this like because we might you might offend so you're gonna just what pretend so imagine now you you walk in a room and you gotta you gotta take blood from a moose right here and you're like uh, you know his now, his veins, by the way, his, the, the veins of these two guys right here, they're, they're, I'll come behind you. They're exactly the same, the vein structure. So like he, this little vein right here where he had blood taken from him, he's got the same, same one, at least on your left. Well, I, don't know, I don't know how veins work, but he's got the same one. So if you, if you take a lot of blood from people, you, you, you got this figured out. But maybe he's got really dark skin like even darker than, than he is on, a, on his arms. And so there are tricks. That you, can, you know what one of the tricks is? No. So you take like <laughs> some alcohol, swipe, and you just like swipe it on his veins, and the color contrast brings it out. So they do that a lot with people with really dark skin because the color contrast will like make your veins stand out. And it's like, okay, we got this, so we'll know which one it is, right? It's not, it's not completely different, right? You understand, but it's like these tiny little things. And someone who's really white, like, really white? You're Italian, so, like, you probably have black blood in you. Some, do you have any relatives who get really dark? Mm, yeah, like, grandfather, great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather? Like, well, hang on, use the mic. It's kind of dark, but, like, not super yeah, okay. dark. I don't well, know. a lot of Italians get really, really dark. That's because Italy and Africa, that's, like, this connection here. You know what I mean? So, but someone with really, really light skin that's almost translucent, well, you'd see every vein in their arm, right? So, so again... It's not, it's not like it's, it's uh, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm offering up here, what I was struck by was how this woman, they had, they had someone in class. They could have said, hey, like Moose, like I just did for all of you, like, hey, Moose, um, can we just do this? Because we're learning here, right? Um, or if we were all, if we were doing this class in Nigeria, and we had one white person in the class. And we'd be like, hey, man, so if you're taking blood from a white person, like, here it is. And again, so no one misunderstands. It's not impossible, but certain skin, you're going to just, you're going to have to work with some tricks. You got that? But, but if we, dude, hang on. What do you think about what I'm saying? I mean, As a future nurse in the world. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. It's a valuable lesson yeah. for nurses. What does anyone do, does it sound reasonable? Like what I'm saying? So I'm 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 asking, like, you know, they're moose, what do you think, man? As a dark skinned dude who, you know, you're gonna help protect so many people from getting poked unneedlessly, but what do you think about what I'm saying? I think it's necessary. What's necessary? Just not wet centering, making oh. sure that people know how to do things for different people. Yeah, thinking outside the box. But here's what happens if, if in the in the class, dude. Thanks. I know I think it's necessary, but I don't know. In that class, there's one single black person, and let's say there's 15 white people or white and brown people, right? And the instructor says to the one black person, like who's you know has your skin complexion, it's like, hey, uh, we need to talk about getting, uh, you know, taking, drawing blood from someone with really, really dark skin, okay? Now, imagine I say that, and here are these people, there's a whole row of people, and it's like, yeah, I'm going to give you a lesson about that, and I'm afraid to turn to Moose and say, uh, hey, Moose, can, can you, like, come up here? Can we just show people, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to get, I don't want to single him out, because he might feel really self-conscious, like with your nose that I just did, okay? But that was a little different. I don't want to single him out, and God forbid I single him out, and he complains that I singled him out in class, when in fact, 
the way I just described all this, it's so perfectly reasonable and makes so much sense. And we're all, and I already explained skin. So there's no, none of these three people have better skin than anybody else. Okay, so I've already explained all that. And now, and if we were singling Nico out, it'd be fine because we live in a world where it's okay to make fun of white people and single white people out. And white people are starting to resist that. But mostly it's just easier to do that because, yeah, whatever, you just do. But, but you know, it's a challenge. And so a lot of what happens, what gets called out as offensive and racist things that people do is because people don't know how to do it. Right? They don't, so if I were doing this phlebotomy, if I were teaching that phlebotomy class, I would just, we'd be having this really open conversation. But imagine being the nurse and going in like the first time and going like, oh my God. Or taking blood from people who are really, really large. There's, do you, you'll talk about that. There are tricks of the trade because it's really, it's a help, it's really can be very difficult to find the vein of someone who's really, really large. So there, you know, there are all tricks in that. Well, you can, that is difficult to talk about too because that would be fat shaming. So it's like, but you'll, you'll have to learn that. You can I give I mean? an example that comes to mind for me? Go ahead, dude. Uh, That's why you're up here, by the way. So I don't, I don't know if like this counts, but like in high school, I, I was like one of the only like white dudes on my basketball team. Uh huh. Um, and I feel like sometimes like, I would be singled out, like even whether it would be like not intentionally or intentionally, I don't know. Like, uh -huh. What do you think about that? Did you feel offended by it or did you feel like? No, no, not really. But well, why, why do you think you didn't feel offended by it? No, I was just giving an example. I, di I didn't know if it like, if you had any thoughts about it. But. No. Well, no, no, yeah, oh, wait. <laughs> no, 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 here's my, <laughs> my, my example would be probably if you're on a basketball team and you're like the only white guy or one of the only white guys you're probably comfortable with people who are not white right yeah. and you're and you're probably you've probably been socialized to accept a certain amount of ribbing because white people have been socialized to accept a certain amount of Ah, man, I don't want to push this too far, but negativity and sometimes hate. It's like the hate that can come to, toward white people, the hate, sometimes the things that I hear black and brown people say about white people, it's just extraordinarily hateful. But white people, dude, are you with me on that? You're laughing. No comment. No comment. <laughs> are you with me on that? Also no comment. All right, okay, I feel like got sometimes it? it could be also like not intentional. Well, yeah, but a lot of stuff that white people say that's offensive is not intentional either. But that doesn't keep us from getting called to the principal's office or whatever, or me getting called to the president's office. Um, that's, the, that's the nature of it. So I think, but a white person, like you, you just sort of, you get socialized to learn and accept it. You know, I don't know. That would be my thought on it. Yeah. Okay, so um, next question. Next thing. That was blood, all right? Uh, how about, can we do protection one really fast? Um, so here's one. You're gonna, you're gonna be in healthcare. And we're gonna go back to you. You're in healthcare, right? What advice would you tell him ver with Moose versus Nico? Again, you're a second year nursing student, okay? I got that. Okay. But let's pretend that you're more advanced. What advice would you tell him versus him about the sun? I mean, statistically, white people are more, like, susceptible to getting skin cancer. Okay. So, I guess I would tell him to wear more sunscreen. You tell Nico to wear more yeah. sunscreen. Okay, awesome. Whereas, Moose, I mean, obviously, he still can get skin cancer, but it's less likely because he has melanin to protect okay. him. Okay. Okay, so now, got it? But he needs protection. What's his protect? Moose needs protection, right? Mm hmm What's his protection? What's he need? Well, he can also use sunscreen, I guess. Uh, well, maybe, but okay, may, do you use sunscreen, by the way? Yep. How, do you use like serious sunscreen? Do you like, wait, hang on, let me ask you this question. I mean like PF 50 or PF 100 or PF like 30 or, let me actually ask this question. 
Um, do you have any question you want to ask him about wearing sunscreen? I can't think of anything. Do you have any? This would be a question for you. Do you wear sunscreen? I do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And is it, what, and why, why do you wear sunscreen? To protect myself. Protect yourself. Yeah. Is it also because you don't want to get any darker? No. Yeah. And for you, to what degree do you wear sunscreen? Because you're protecting yourself versus like, yeah, man, I don't want to get any darker in the sun. It's definitely the first. I, I don't think I've thought about the latter whenever uh -huh. I'm putting on sunscreen. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do you know the reason I asked? Do you know why I asked that? Why, why do I ask that? I think in some cultures, there's um, the perception that darkness is bad. So like just putting on sunscreen to prevent yourself from getting any darker or using creams that can lighten your skin. Yeah, or not even just other cultures, but lots of black people, like people who are, people who, who are darkly pigmented and people who are black. They're like, okay, I'm cool here, but like, I don't want to get any blacker. Like, there are a lot of people who, how many black people would like to be your shade of black versus, dude, I don't know, man. Dude. dude. Can, let me just, can, how about you, bro? Come on, just stand up. Can you like, wait, yo, and, and, and you, bro. No, hang on. Yeah, and you, bro. You two guys. How about this, man? Let's just have, can you, can, can you get him in the, here, look to that camera right there. Or can we, where, where are we? We're in green, right? Can you guys pull your hoods down? No, you don't have to, but just look straight in there. How, how many, look at these two guys. Wait, don't look up there. Look at the camera. All right, so got it? Can you get a, we got a good, nah, shit. Hang on, can you guys come up here, actually? Just come up here. All right, Moose, yes. I'm going to ask you to answer a question, right? All right, man. What's your name, bro? Elliot. Elliot? Elliot. Mont. All right, man. Got it. How many people, so look at their skin complexion. Do we got a good shot? Ah, it's hard in the light. Okay, but anyway, right? You're very, sim you're very similar in tone, so I really only need one of you. Bro, how many people, how many black people in the United States, you ready, would rather have your skin complexion than one, of the, than one of these guys. They look at you and they go, I want to be really dark like Moose versus like, yeah, I want to be kind of like Mocha, like these guys. Mocha. How do you, how, hang on. How would you describe yourself, man? How's your skin? How I'm you, a light skin. Light skin? Yeah. That? <laughs> caramel. Caramel. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely caramel, man. <laughs> you're not caramel, dude? You don't want to be caramel? No. Nah. Dude, all right, caramel. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Caramel and light, all right? How many, because this mat is so, you get this, right? So hang on, do you guys, are you guys comfortable just being here, standing here? You're not? All right, that's all right. That's all right. You got it, dude, you got it. All right, so listen, man. Uh, how many, answer my question, man. How many people? We would rather be you, we gotta have your skin than their skin. Caramel skin, look at this dude right here, dude. I think more people would want to be caramel or light skin what what's behind that what do you think i think it's just the the undertones and like what having different skin tones mean mean for you like in terms of um you know are people going to make fun of you um are you as close to white as you can possibly be and being closer to white means what i think we have the perception that being closer to white is is better is better or like being lighter is kind of like the beauty standard. Yeah, being well. lighter would be more of a standard. Yeah. How about okay, hang on man. How do you guys, how do you guys see that? Like how do you see it? I'll start with you, bro. Maybe you can hold the mic. Hold it close. Hey, how do you see it? How do you see your skin? What do you see when you look at it? First off, what's your what's your ancestry? What do you what what's your ancestry? Black. What he said is black. You have black. both parents? Yes. But you have white in you, man. <laughs> well my, my mom's mixed. Your mom's mixed? Yeah. Okay. Right. Do you and you, bro? Do you? Have it? No. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you look. You look straight up black. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we do. Hang on. Can I ask you a question? When you look at him, do you know he's got yeah. white in him, right there, bro? When you look at him, do you know he's got white in him? One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's pretty easy, yeah. right? Even Nico gets that, right? <laughs> All right. So, like, how do you see? How do you see your skin? 
it's like caramel. Like it's like yeah. Like how like, how how is it for you? Like how 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 do how do you think other people perceive you, or how have they perceived you? Just light skin. Just light skin. Yeah. yeah. Any like, do you take any ribbing for it or no. anything good? Do you do you feel like it's value? It's more valuable. Do people? Ever, no, not really. Yeah, you know, dude. Here, give me another mic, dude. How about you, man? Being light skin, like, how is that for you? I mean, it just really depends on who it is. Uh huh. Like females like dark skins. Some females like light skins. Uh huh. Depends. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys could choose, so you're yourself, right? You're exactly who you are, right? So you nah, we're not gonna go there. You choose who you are. Okay, I got that. Yep. So, um. Man, I got so many, I got so many questions, man. I'm going to, I'll bring you back up another time. Uh, I really only want it just uh, to compare. I'll bring you back up another time. Yeah. I'll ask you a bunch of questions. Cool? Yeah. Dude, all right, man. Nice to meet you, man. How, do, how do you think I knew that you had white in you, by the way? Probably my hair. Yeah, Curly partly hair. your hair. Your nose, too. Yeah? Yeah. No, like, this is it, though, right? Hang on. Hold that. When I say your nose too, like how how is that for you? What do you mean, like? I mean, how, is it all right? Is yeah, it cool? Yeah, big nose, but that's about it. No, nah, it's just like yeah, no, but you have this like bridge on your nose in a certain way. Look, like for example, like I I study faces, right? I mean, this is one thing I do. Like I look at faces, I study faces. I'm really interested. It's like you. I looked at your nose. I'm like, okay, I got that. This this is because I spend so much time doing this with different people that it's just natural for me, right? If I say to him like, oh yeah, I see your nose. Like I can see you got white in you. It's like that's like me saying, hey. Uh, I see that that screen is on right there. Oh, look, that screen and that screen say the same thing. It's like nothing to me, right? And it's nothing to any of us. But what happens is we make fun of certain things or it's like we make one standard better than another. And then suddenly like somebody like me, I'm getting called out. Why are you calling this guy out because of his nose? It's like, come on, man. It's just a nose. You know what I mean? It's what a nose is. It's okay. Right? But we put things on it, and then we make it something other than what it is. All right, gentlemen, listen, man. Thanks, dog. You're welcome. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Okay, so, uh, how was that? That was clean. Clean? I'm good? Wait, have I, am I, have I offended? Have I, any microaggressions yet? Are we good? Is this like stamp of approval? Stamp of approval. Anybody? Anybody feel like I'm? I'm like, oh, this is not. You see, what I'm doing is I'm normalizing conversations that we really need to be having, but we're not having to the degree to which even like in a nursing program we're not doing that, right? Okay. Well, by the way, the other protection for him, he needs sunlight. Dude, you need sunlight when you like. You, when you're in state college like this and there's a sunny day, get, take your hoodie off, pull your sleeves up, get as much sun as you can, or you need to be taking vitamin D and calcium and folic acid supplements, but you need sunlight. You need more sunlight than, than Calpita does or than Nico does. So those of you who are more darkly pigmented here in state college, you need, there's not a lot of sun here. So you get a sunny day. Go get the sun. Get as much as you can, man. Drink that in because you need that for your calcium. You need it for vitamin D and folic acid, folic production, okay? So, but we don't tell that. Has anyone ever told you that, bro? No one's ever told you that. It's like, but we tell him, we tell me, hey, make sure you wear a lot of sun protection, but we're not, we're not saying that. And so this is one of these ways in which, you know, you got to kind of like flip it around a little bit and uh, it's okay. It's cool. All right, man. Um, I was going to do a thing on photography, but it's similar with photography. It's like if you take photo, if you're serious about photographs, and I'm like, phot photography is about light. And like, dude, it's all about light. And so what's going to happen is if I try, whom I got to learn how to take photographs of white people to uh, Dark, darkly pigmented people and, and brown people, right? You, gotta, you learn that. And if I'm taking a photo of all three of those, the lights, it's all about light and dark. And so the light's going to bounce off her skin differently than his skin, differently than his skin. So if like, I'm a photographer, that's like the kind of stuff you, gotta, you learn. You don't just take photos. So like, let's say that you're taking photos. You, gotta, you guys are all friends and you're out taking photos. I mean, you're just like, 
these shots. And like in every shot, like if, if the two of you are afraid to say to Moose, like because you don't want to offend Moose, like, hey man, you're not like, you're underexposed in these photos. Or you're afraid to say to Nico, uh, well, you wouldn't be afraid to say to Nico, like, Nico, you look like a ghost. Come on, man. The camera is focusing on us here. You're the white guy out. You look like a ghost. But you would never say to him, like, oh, dude, you look like we can't even see you. You're like, you're totally underexposed. Because you'd be, because af- we tend to be afraid of, of, of uh, offending. It's like, ah, don't be afraid. Come on, talk about this. It's okay, right? It's what it is. All right, man. Dudes, that's it for you. I mean, you're awesome. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thank Thanks. You. All right. All right, man. Dude. You guys, too. They didn't clap for you, did they? Dude. Give them a round of applause, these guys. <laughs> All right, man. All right, so listen. We're going to do a couple things here. Um, by the way, um, remember, no, hang on. We, we always go to 420 and I have something I want to talk about. Uh, so, uh, Julie, um, if you're, you're st- the screen's still going, I assume Julie, you can like st- start it up now. Um, here's the thing. Um, you can, hey, Nish, did, did you, you can cut the screen now, the stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 